do as news consumers to demand a more, a less biased coverage? That is How a do great I say question. This? Oh. Um, Don't watch yeah, it. I mean, it, it, I can see that this is a frustrated news consumer watching both sides of the aisle. You're frustrated. I mean, something they want. we're not talking, of course, about our network. No. But we are frustrated news consumers as well when we leave the air at 9 a.m., aren't we? Uh, we, we like what we do. From 6 to 9 a.m. Yes, very now, much. And that's all we can say. Okay. Um, well, I well, guess that's, well, the, that's the answer. But, but watch there, it. There is, a, there is a larger, more cosmic answer to it, and, and, and Meacham is here to, I think, talk about it. I'm here for cosmic stuff. To, to give uh, larger cosmic answers. It, it, it's, what ha it's what has happened to the news business over the course of the very recent past, the last 10 years. You now have a, a, a presidential election, and I challenge you to... No matter what papers you read, you have one of the finest papers in the world, the New York Times, right here in this market. Oh, I thought you were going to say the New York Post. But, uh, I mean, you, you, go, you go look, find the greatest story ever told is the story of America. And the story of America this year and in every election year is about, guess what? It's about you. It's about the people who vote. It's about the people who form the spine and the daily substance of America. Go find their stories in the papers. You won't find them. You'll find stories about polls and an endless number of assholes running for public office <laughs> and things that are not you germane to your life or your children's lives, oh, and it's the diminishment of our business. And as a result, you now have a series of people on the ballot who are more afraid of being tweeted against and saying, oh my God, Senator, did you see Strong Boy 16, what he said about me? <laughs> <laughs> These anonymous hackers who chip away at the lives of public people, and, uh, and we don't address it in the media. We well, don't address it. The, the Cheeto eaters. And the problem is, John Meacham, that you get people that now wake up in the morning, they can turn on a cable news station that yep. reinforces all of their pre-existing prejudices. Right. Then they can get in the car and they drive to work and they can, whether they're conservative or liberal, they can find a radio station that reinforces all of their pre-existing prejudices. And then they go home at night if they're like my mother and then they will go to websites that reinforce all their pre-existing prejudices. So by the end of the day, their political opponent is not wrong. Then she emails their, you vitriol. Then, yeah, then yeah. she emails me and calls me a socialist. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, your opponent's not wrong. Your opponent's evil. the enemy and evil. Yeah. Evil. Evil. Well, the, the legacy of the New York Times, which is so important because, you know, this is all a reversion to 18th and 19th century media models where you had partisan papers. Every paper was partisan. When Adolph Ox bought the New York Times in 1896, after a first and slightly less successful investment in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, with uh, the, the Chattanooga Times, he took the position of printing things without fear or favor as a market position because there were 40 papers in New York City. Mm -hmm. If you were a mugwump who was pro-choice, you had your own newspaper. And Ox saw that there was an opening there. And what we have seen now, and this is, Mike's time frame is exactly right, it's true in the last 10 to 12 years, is as the economic storms have hit the mainstream media, you now have news organizations, media organizations, that have an economic stake in the perpetuation of conflict rather than the resolution of problems. And as long as that is true, you're going to have people encountering what I would think of as the theology of their belief as opposed to history right. and fact that might be actually challenging. As Daniel Patrick Moynihan said, we're all entitled to our own opinions, but not our own facts. Okay. So uh, go ahead, Brett. Steve. So can I say? Wait, Misham has, has like, one like person thank applauding. You. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mom came up from That's Chattanooga. That's some Chattanooga caucus <laughs> back there. Rocky Top. Here we go, All right. David. Go ahead. So let me just be slightly controversial um, about this because uh, I worked at the New York Times for eight and a half years, and I don't deny the New York Times has changed. Uh, certainly television news has changed, and cable news has changed. But what I would also say is, is, the, is, it, is you know, the, what's, does the fault, dear Brutus, lie in our stars or in ourselves? In other words, has the media changed because the media has changed, or has the media changed because the people who consume the media are like it that way? The people who watch Fox like it that way, presumably. The people who watch MSNBC in the evening, presumably, They're like it that money. way. They're making money. Yeah. And so I, 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 think, I don't think it's fair to entirely blame the media. I think if, if all these people out there want the media to be like PBS, then they should watch PBS, and then it all will oh, be yeah. like PBS. That would you know, be the and advice. let me make one last point. Yeah. One last point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
My mother. Um, <laughs> Because I, I, I get a lot of the incoming directed at the New York Times, because I did work there. If you went back and read the New York Times from 20 years ago, none of you would read it. You, would know, you wouldn't read it, because it basically reported what happened the day before in a very <coughs> factual way the next morning. And nobody, except maybe on television or radio, when they woke up in the morning, knew what happened the day before. By the time you wake up in the morning today, you knew everything. You know everything that happened the day before. So you're looking for context. You're looking for color. You're looking for controversy. You're looking for all this other stuff. And so what people say is the bias of the New York Times, and it is a liberal newspaper, I'm not going to deny that, although not nearly in a 19th century way, right, right. Uh, reflects the fact that newspapers have to be edgier today to, and, and go beyond what happened yesterday in order to have readers. All that, I think all that's true. It, the, this, the question is, and it's a free market and you can't say the First Amendment's good for papers with which you, or websites with which you agree and not for those with which you don't and you're right about the, the fault. It's just that this is the political reality, and it's one of the things that makes it so hard to forge what FDR called the science of human relationships. 